Welcome to phase four of the UC BIOS Journey podcast. We call phase four the implementation phase. As you begin any implementation process, it's essential to have a solid implementation plan with your hosted provider. Um, our organizations can face any number of complications during the implementation process. Embarking in a UC implementation without a process in place is extremely risky. So uh, we've identified uh, nine vital criteria to ensure that you have a successful UCAS implementation. Uh, the first criteria is uh, to make sure that you have experienced implementation experts. There's a lot of moving pieces when it comes to implementing a, a robust UC solution. Uh, your business requirements are unique and your hosted provider needs to have the experience to properly guide your charge into your change into a successful UC implementation. Uh, the second thing you'll need is a dedicated project manager. Your chosen hosted solutions should have a designated implementation team led by a project manager who's responsible for the whole project as well as onboarding. The project manager will establish clear expectations, ensure success through execution, and be in charge of customer relationship and experience, uh, your relationship and experience. The project manager will also coordinate uh, the activities of the implementation team and any additional resources you might need. Uh, the project manager should also be held accountable and ensure continued momentum with any additional resources to complete your successful UC implementation. Uh, the third thing you'll need is robust briefings uh, before an implementation plan is made. Implementation preparation starts with discovery. Uh, the provider should work with your team to establish a thorough study of your environment. Uh, during these briefings, uh, business use will be established for your new uh, UC solution, and features and functionality should be investigated in your current environment. Uh, your requirements and expectations uh, should be outlined in the overall project, and the team, the implementation team, should have a general idea of when your implementation should be complete. Uh, it's important to keep the implementation team um, on task and make sure that it's completed on time. Uh, and then uh, when, that, when those briefings are complete, uh, you need, number four, a project plan. Uh, a working implementation plan should contain the complete strategy framework for the project phases, including preparation, planning, refining design, the actual implementation, operation, and optimization afterward. Uh, the framework should establish clarity and expectations for the project and the process. The, pro uh, the product definition should be crafted by the provider to be used as a reference point throughout the life of the project. It will provide uh, detailed clarity for the overall use of the project by defining objectives, success criteria, major milestones, deliverables, and project conditions, which can include things like assumptions, issues, risks, constraints, you know, your basic problems. Uh, what are the problem children of this project? Uh, the project definition will vary by which solution you use and your unique business environment. So it will vary um, from company to company based on your needs. <clears throat> All right, and then next up is the fifth item, a kickoff call and scoping. A kickoff, a kickoff call establishes the handoff between the sales team, who's uh, presumably been working with you up until this point, to the implementation team. Uh, the hosted provider sales team and solution engineers m should make introductions to the implementation team. The implementation team will identify and define the, the various roles on their team. Your team will identify team members that will work with the implementation team and be established as the primary context for that implement implementation team to keep the plan on target. Target. The key team members from your team will be principal and technical provision as associates, as well as uh, a financial contact as well to make sure billing goes smoothly. Uh, the implementation team will review the environment, share the implementation vision, and clarify objectives. Uh, an in-depth review of the scope of the project will be appraised. The team will also review uh, the project plan, timeline, milestones, dependencies and the resources needed. Uh, during this kickoff call, uh, your requirements will be established, uh, the things you need to do to make, uh, to make things work with the implementation team, as well as your schedule and a meeting guideline moving forward. Uh, training needs and various options will be discussed and determined uh, as part of the implementation process. Uh, the implementation manager, that dedicated manager that we talked about will provide you 
with an escalation option if you feel that your project is not on target, um, if you need to go above that. <clears throat> All right, the sixth step is to uh, refine and design pro the process. Um, as the project initiates, the weekly meetings will review updates, verify any changes, make requests as identified during the kickoff call. Uh, during these meetings, the project plan will be updated to reflect any progress and additional requirements and any changes that have been made. Uh, step seven is the, the big step, uh, implementation. During the, that phase of implementation, um, the project will continue to be monitored and tracked by both teams and the project plan will be updated. Uh, presumably there will be weekly calls um, between uh, your team and the implementation team. And they'll, uh, those calls are designed to make sure that everyone is confident with the direction of the implementation and that everything is going smoothly. The solution um, will then be deployed according to the company plan, configured to meet the specific needs of your company, and the procurement of any hardware uh, that's required with the solution uh, will be established um, so that uh, so that provider will make sure that you have everything that you need um, at all of the locations that are involved. A uh, test group at your business will be granted access to the enabled solution and training will begin. Uh, the test group will evaluate and make sure that the in, the solution actually works in your in your in your space. Uh, and then uh, step eight is the go live transition. Once the uh, solutions have been tested and evaluated for functionality, the final training and rollout will be initiated uh, for the for the rest of the company. Uh, performance of the solution and any enhancements will be closely monitored, and fine tuning will be made. And the final step is the migration to support. So much like the transition from the sales team to the implementation team, you'll have a, a migration from the implementation team to the support team, the, the team that's designed to keep you up and running uh, through the duration of your solution. Uh, and let's see, the onset of that meeting will begin as a comprehensive question and answer situation to make sure everything has been covered. And then the implementation manager will review the project You'll provide feedback to ensure that all the parties feel that the expectations were met and that implementation is success. And then you will be handed over from the implementation team to the support team. Um, so that's generally what the implementation process looks like. And when you're, um, I feel like this is important for people to realize even before they've uh, established exactly what vendor they want to work with. They, they want to make sure that there's a real a plan like this in place with an implementation team to make sure that th this plan works best for your company. Um, so that is uh, a little food for thought when you're going through the, the buyer's process. Thank you for joining us today for a brief uh, overview of the fourth phase of the UC buyer's journey, the implementation phase.